let's find out how she got on. Please welcome Rowetta. Look at you! I've stopped drinking. Are you safe? I've stopped yeah. smoking. For, have you? For a month, yeah. Oh, wow. brilliant. Yeah. So how, how long have you been sober? How long since you left rehab? From the 25th of November. Well, I had my last drink on the 25th of October. Went into rehab for a month. And then I did slip on New Year's Eve, um, about 2 o'clock in the morning. I had about four drinks. But I've not gone back and I feel great. Do you? Mm. It must be quite scary, I would imagine, seeing the world through sober eyes for the first time in quite a long time, is it? It's brilliant, to be honest. I remember everything. I remember conversations now. I remember singing. I remember meeting people. Usually I just see photographs on Facebook and I think, oh, no, or YouTube videos of me drunk, yeah. doing gigs, and I can't remember. I can't remember the... I can't remember the songs, can't remember mm. doing anything, can't remember meeting people. Were you, were you drunk, like, 24-7? No, not at just... all. Just to went out to meet people, so when people would see me. I wasn't drunk, I'd so have a drink. So to do with confidence then? Yeah, yeah, I just couldn't handle it and people expected me to be mad like I was an X Factor, yeah. I found really hard. I never thought it was to do with my ex-husband, which the therapist at Passages said it was, mm. about my domestic violence. I always thought it was just a need to be on all the time and, like, you're always I'm funny. Sure. It's, like, it's like, if I met you and you weren't funny that day, mm. Would you feel really bad? Because I would feel bad if I didn't, if I wasn't mm. what people expected. Mm. Yeah, I think you do always meet people and think they're expecting me, yeah. you know, yeah. to come up with something funny. your social world? Have your socially your friends changed now? A little bit. I mean, I was in um, a, a band that was known for drugs and drink, um, right. Happy Mondays, and the, some of them are my closest friends, but I can't... They have to not drink around me at the moment. I can't stay at parties. I feel really like the boring one that I used to call my friends who don't <laughs> drink, and when they go home early, I feel like that person. But I'm not being it's boring. It's great being boring, though, isn't it? I love it is. being boring. I love driving I everywhere. Do. I do. Mm, and do. You can, and it's a much better life being boring. It is. It's just parties, <laughs> is you it? Just it is, honestly. You just remember everything. I'm looking at the moment. Hangover. I just hate having to let people down, leaving parties early, yeah. where I used to say, everyone back to my hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and mm. we'll sing all night. I'll do everything you want me to do. I can't remember any of it, but yeah. I love it. I mean, mm. at, the, at the core of that, do you think... I'm playing amateur therapist here, and you can tell me I'm completely wrong. Um, but at the core of that, isn't it that sort of that craving to be loved, to be liked? You want everyone to like you, and to and so you'll you'll sort of be the clown, you'll be the party animal, you'll be the one who, you know, is the last man standing at a party. And, and at the core of that, that's sort of this craving for approval. Probably is, um, because I probably felt rejected um, years ago. So it probably is, because I was frightened that people would think I was boring. Because I remember an X Factor, Simon had said, you're in this because part of the reason is you've got a great voice, but you're interesting. Mm. And the thing that he thought was interesting was me drunk. Mm. And that's not... I didn't think it was interesting. It was funny. But he said I was interesting, and I'm like, but I'm not really like this. No, all I've just the time. had half a ton of whiskey. That's yeah. why. And that... he knew it. Could, everyone could smell it on me. But uh -huh. they, they like that bubbly, drunken person. I couldn't be like that on the days of the final, the final nights when we were doing the live shows. I couldn't drink because there wasn't time. You get your makeup done, dress, and I thought, God, when it comes to the bit where I've sung and I've got to stand there. I've got to be funny, and I can't. Mm. I've not had enough to drink to be funny. I've only had enough for one, and it's really difficult. I love the singing. It was the bit afterway, the judging yeah. you and all that, yeah. where I've got to come up with a funny comment tonight, and I can't. Would it be... I, I'd love to ask this question, actually. Would you like to go back, if you could change things now, and go back as a sober contestant on X Factor? Do you think it would make any difference? It wouldn't make any difference, because I was the last woman. I did really well. Yeah. You did. It would make a difference to me in my life, what ha what's happened after X Factor. I'd love to... If it started a whole new series again, and Simon was in it, because I love him, I would love to have done it. I couldn't do it again, because mm. they're all... It's very young now. Yeah. They're all younger than my children who win it. So it'd be a bit pointless going in for it. But, yeah, I would, I would have liked to have done it sober. Also, and it, that and it... must have been absolutely terrifying for you, because you were, like you said, you did extremely well, you were the last woman in it, and then you were shot into... To the media. How yeah. did you cope with that? It was before that. It was when my ex-husband sold his story. I couldn't mm. handle it. Mm. I knew it would happen, but well, I didn't know that had happened. Everybody in the country seemed to know that I was mm. this victim, and I hate, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not a victim, and I didn't want people... I thought men were going to think they could hit me, because mm. I'm like, and that yeah. kind of thing. I was just worried that people would think I was weak. weak. And when I drink, I'm not weak. I'm this strong... It's your sort of defence shield, almost. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. not going to say I don't love it. I love being that strong, drunk person. Or oh, I thought I did. Yeah. But it's just... It's because it's easy. It's yeah. easier to be drunk in a lot of ways than it is to be sober and face reality and be scared, you know. But 
and I loved what you said. I was crying backstage when I heard what you were saying. It's just horrible how some people can make you feel yes. and drive you to drink. And it's much better if you can handle it. It's getting control of it. And I feel stronger. And I've not had a drink of whiskey. And I think every time I've done this show before, I've had at least one. Thank you. And you're up, you're up on tour, aren't you? You're back on stage, you're up on tour. It's the Songs of Sister Act. The Songs of Sister Act with the London Community Gospel Choir. It's a 28-date tour, a 28 day tour yeah. starting the 22nd of April, which I'd have to be sober for because it is nearly every night. I think I'm doing a lot of places you're doing. Probably. Your tour. <laughs> and so it's really exciting because the choir are amazing and I didn't want to let them down by drinking and smoking. So, yeah, if people can come and see it, it'd be brilliant. We're doing the songs from the films. Listen, we think you're absolutely fabulous sober. Oh, thank you. Don't go back, stick with it. And we'll try. see you uh, it's tonight, isn't it? Rehab's on living tonight at 9 o'clock. Victoria Sellers, my roommate, I love her to pieces. <laughs> Brilliant. Congratulations. Thank Long you. may it continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take another question.